to be interesting to see whether those results against Morecambe and Shrewsbury were just a little bump in the road and whether Jackson could react to it. My God has he reacted to it, you know, and I don't really know what else he has to do to prove that he is the man for the job because I think it's fairly obvious at this point now. It's quite plain and simple really. Jackson is the man for the job and no one else. It, it, it would be a criminal offence if Sandgard was to not appoint him, at least until the end of the season. We're up to 14th, in and amongst it now, a win away from 10th, 10 points off the playoffs. January fast approaching, you know, we're in a bloody good position. And against and winning against a team like Ipswich, who was supposed to be one of the favourites to win the league this season, to control them in the way that we did was just absolutely outstanding. You know, we absolutely dominated them. I mean, to be fair, in the first half, the first half an hour or so, it was quite difficult to see who was going to be on top. You know, both teams, they did try and come forward, but didn't really have any success of it. Ipswich, they liked to come forward on that left-hand side. Carl Edwards and Sonia Luco, their two wide men, had a lot of pace about them. You know, they were using that right-hand side, but they just never didn't really do anything threatening in the half an hour but to be fair neither did we you know it was very difficult to see who was going to 
command this game and then eventually seemingly out of nowhere one long ball over the top in towards Connor Washington he cuts inside has a shot on the right foot Christian Walton saves it thinks he's done enough but it only comes out to our top scorer Jaden Stockley who slams it into the net on the weak foot for his seventh league goal of the season I think he's 14th in all comps and his 12th goal in as many games the man is just on fire right now and it, it, it's still bewilders me how some people don't like him I know full well that there are some people that don't rate Stockley and to be honest with you I think they need to give their head a wobble Stockley is fantastic he was a big miss in his three match ban and that was evident Ipswich didn't really threaten us much in the first half they did obviously in the half an hour as I say in the first half an hour it was fairly even you know we were trying to test each other out trying to get the game going get the tempo flowing and eventually it was us who broke the deadlock and you could say from that point on that Ipswich's confidence you know it did sort of fade away towards the end because we have to say Ipswich really did not threaten us you know they did not threaten us whatsoever eight shots in the game zero on target you know they really really struggled but in fairness to Ipswich their goalkeeper was just on steroids honestly the amount of saves that he pulled off in that second half if it wasn't for him I think it could have been a cricket score we could have absolutely battered Ipswich if it wasn't for Walton you know so many chances you know Ben Purrington's chance I have no idea how Purrington even got to the header in the first place in the second half you know the ball come in I think it took a it took a deflection before going in and Purrington somehow managed to beat the defender to the header and Walton's pulled off an unbelievable save and then there was I think an opportunity from Washington that was saved he sort of like scuffed the shot and it was going towards the top corner and Walton pulled off a brilliant save Elliot Lee took a shot that was saved although he did shoot it straight down the keeper's throat I think he pulled off another save as well I can't remember who from but yeah it was another very good save but we were just coming at Ipswich you know we were winning the midfield battles that midfield three Dobson Gilby and Lee was absolutely outstanding again their attack Macaulay Bond was in Jason Pearson and Famo's pocket all night they brought on Joe Piggott as well and he was ineffective you know as I say their wide men they had pace you know Edwards and Aluko I would say probably they were the most threatening players they had you know they were running forward constantly trying to cut inside get crosses in the box but ultimately they weren't really they didn't really come to anything and you know Craig McGillivray once again was untested in the end it was a fairly dominant display once again from the addicts you know and as i say if it wasn't for their goalkeeper it really should have been a lot more Connor washington deserved a goal last night from his performance he was absolutely outstanding probably the best performance i've seen him play in a charlton shirt and the same can also be said for alex gilby who I think was uh, it's very close to call between him and Washington for man of the match. Both of them were just absolutely flawless. Their best performances in a Charlton shirt by a country mile. And Gilby did get a very well deserved goal through a, a very good goal as well. You know, ball played into him. He fakes the defender and just slots it into the bottom corner. Runs straight to the dugout to Jackson to celebrate. The, the absolute scenes in the covered end and around the valley was just absolutely fantastic. You know, Ipswich vacated the ground shortly after that which i don't really blame them for a very well deserved three points very worthy winners in the end that was the full-time whistle charlton athletic to ipswich town nil ipswich to be fair to them i have to say they are probably one of the best fans that i've seen come to the club you know the fact that they sold out the jimmy seed stand on a tuesday night as well i know it's not that far away you know from south london to ipswich is not too far of a journey but to be fair to them very well done for selling out that but i do have to say along with doncaster they are probably the worst team i've seen us play at the valley so far if when we scored it just sort of derailed them you know they just lost confidence the midfield battles were just always won by us attackingly they just had absolutely nothing and like i said if it wasn't for their goalkeeper it would have been about five or six nil easy john mcgreal i think his name is it was going to be interesting to see how he set the team up and he had he didn't really have much time to change the team either. He made, I think he made a couple of changes to the to his side. Obviously, Burson Salina wasn't available. I felt he would have caused us problems if he was playing. But yeah, Ipswich really didn't offer us much. And as I say, they were probably the worst team I've seen us play this season, along with Doncaster at home. As for Cholton, though, we were just absolutely flawless. You know, Jason Pierce returning to the side. I've given him a lot of pelters over the years. But my God, has he been an absolute force in the league this season. And it's just proved, you know, how vital he is at the moment with the injuries to Ryan Innes and Sam Lavelle at the moment. You know, when we had him out and we had Chris Gunter playing in that position and Pape Soiree as well, you could tell that defensively we were really, really light and really, really thin and lacking quality. Pierce has come back in the side and he was absolutely flawless last night. Same with Fanmo, you know, they had Macaulay Bond in their back pocket. Dobson was electric in the middle of the pitch, an absolute engine. 
Alex Gilby, like I say, it's so tough between him and Washington in a minute for man of the match. You know, they were absolutely fantastic, the pair of them. Washington deserved the goal. You know, he really, really did. The the pace, the technicality, a bit of skill as well. He honestly ran his bollocks off. And they both of them, him and Gilby, they played for the shirt. Lee was solid as ever. And Stockley continues his goal scoring form at the moment. You know, we really are fantastic, you know, and... 13 games, Johnny Jackson is now in charge as caretaker manager. He's managed 13 games, nine wins, two draws and two defeats. That just speaks for itself. You know, no one else is fit for this job other than Johnny Jackson. What else does he need to prove? You know, he is quite plain and simply the man for the job. He gets this club. He's Mr. Cholton. If he's got this team that looked shocking like a couple months ago to like top two form. Saturday, it's not going to be an easy game taken on Cambridge. They put five past Cheltenham last night, so they will be coming to the Valley with confidence. But obviously, we're fine in form at the moment, and we're going to be saying, bring them on. We are going to be saying, bring them on. Fill the Valley once again. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. I can't wait for this game. And we're on top of the world right now as Cheltenham fans. You know, I know we're 14th. We've still got a long way to go with the top six, but we are looking very, very good. And at the moment, who says we can't make it? You know, who says that we cannot do it. We need to go on a pretty good run, but at the moment, I think this team, with the way that we're playing right now, with some phenomenal performances out there last night and under Johnny Jackson in general, apart from, obviously, the bump in the road at Morecambe and Shrewsbury, we're looking very, very good at the moment. We're looking very, very good, and I cannot wait for Saturday's game against Cambridge. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of when I post this has been Tyler Roninson. Have a nice day and I will see you all on Saturday for the match reaction against Cambridge. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then. Jacko, he's the man and no one else is.